In 1819, when Vienna was the cultural center of Europe, there was a music publisher called Anton Diabelli. He was also a bit of a composer, and he wrote uh, a little trifle, a little waltz, and uh, sent this to 50 of the composers of the day, um, and asked them all to write one variation each. And, of course, it, this included Beethoven. And Beethoven, rather typically, would have nothing to do with this until he discovered that there was a reasonably hefty fee involved. And composers then, as now, are not wealthy people, generally speaking. Beethoven then produced 33 variations in a way of showing off, I think. I can take this sow's ear of a waltz and turn it into 33 silk purses. The actual theme is a little waltz. It's not actually a theme that you can sing, but it's really a sequence of harmonic uh, progressions. So basically, it's dominant and tonic, dominant and tonic, and then he goes. Anybody would say, this is not really a piece of music, this is just an exercise. Diabelli Variations is, 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 is a strange one, really, because it, in a sense, it's one of the most important pieces that Beethoven ever composed. It's one of the most important pieces of piano music anybody ever composed. And it's not very well known. And people who like Beethoven's music and know Beethoven's music very often don't really know the Diabelli Variations, and yet it's a kind of crowning achievement. The very first variation on this waltz is a march. It's like he says, look, I can do this, just for starters. I'll take your waltz and I'll turn it into a march. A march, which incidentally sounds a lot like the opening of uh, Wagner's Master Singers. Uh, I don't know whether Wagner knew the Diabelli variations. But th there are, apart from the tricks and the jokes, there are also astonishing moments of profundity. You see, this piece consists of many uh, influences. To a large extent, a lot of it is uh, highly influenced by Bach. He was, a great, he was a great admirer of Bach, and fugue plays a big role in this work, so a lot of the variations are in fugal style. refers to composers of his day, which one of them, of course, Mozart. Mozart's Figaro was very popular at the time, so he said, let me put this in just for fun. Etc. And this itself is almost laughable when you hear it in between all these serious variations. And then the minute when he stops that particular variation, he goes into a sort of parody, uh, almost ridiculing uh, the style of piano teaching that was happening at the time. All this, and it's, it's like a cat and mouse game. Uh, and you would say, musically, there's nothing in it. But when you hear this piece being played in the context of these variations, it's incredibly right. Gerard Willems is undoubtedly uh, Australia's finest Beethoven interpreter. Uh, he is, in fact, the only Australian to record all 32 of the Beethoven piano sonatas. five piano concertos. 
he won two ARIA awards for the recording of the sonatas. Uh, the DVD of the Emperor Concerto won an international DVD award for music excellence. And of course the entire cycle has been critically acclaimed from day one. I was challenged to record the Diabelli Variations after I'd already recorded the sonatas. My producer just challenged me, when are you ready to do the Diabelli Variations? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah, I was rather daunted by the fact that it was such a big piece and such a complex piece. I decided to work on it, uh, spent six months really analyzing it, working on it, and we were able to use, fortunately, Wayne Stewart's latest instrument. This Concert Grand is the first piano that's ever been built with its full frequency range, or the, the largest possible number of keys you can actually build practically into a, uh, an acoustic grand piano. The moods that are created in this piece um, are wonderfully reflected in the instrument itself. And in fact, the instrument actually helps play this piece. Um, and I think when you come to something like, uh, like for instance, uh, this Allegro con Brio, for instance, where you have a very vibrant sort of uh, trill with, uh, with a, an ostinato bass, um, the instrument speaks for itself. This type of uh, noise, clattering noise, is in actual fact very appropriate, uh, appropriately expressed through this particular instrument. I think it's fitting uh, that such a work being played and recorded in a, in a modern country, or a young country rather, uh, it should be played on a very adventurous piano, and uh, we certainly have that. The Stuart and Sons piano is integral to the entire project, giving it a uniquely Australian sound. It's fitting, in fact, that we complete this monumental project with the Diabelli variations, 10 years after the completion of the sonatas as well as the Diabelli Variations. I'm also playing the Andante Favori. It was meant to be originally the slow movement of the Falstein Sonata, and also an, an exquisite little piece called Fur Elise, which of course everybody knows. Structure really is the key to Beethoven. Structure was what Beethoven used for expressivity. expression of the music is in the form of the music, not so much in the materials of the music. It's what he does with his ideas that's so important in Beethoven's case, and that's why the Diabelli Variations is a perfect piece to talk about Beethoven, because he's got this really unpromising material, this silly little waltz, and then he constructs a, an hour of glorious, transcendent, tragic, funny, everything, the whole world music out of it. 